with the plan. Okay. <laughs> All right, and we are rolling. This is Bernita Reed. I'm here in San Antonio, Texas. It's mm -hmm. November the 18th, 2017. And I'm here with Clyde Glossom and with Edwin Glossom, uh, two brothers. And I would like for them to start by saying their names and giving when they were born and where they were born. My name is Clyde Pearson Glossom. I was born in San Antonio, Texas, January the 22nd, 1947. My name is Edwin Glosson, born in November the 8th, 1948. I'm 69 now. And tell me who your parents were, what their names were, what they did. Uh, my father's Reverend J.C. Glosson, uh, a retired minister who pushed education. You know, you can do my own. Uh, my mother's name was Carrie. Lee Nance, and uh, she's from Kyle, Texas. She married my father. Oh, they stayed married 66 years. 67. 67? Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And um, what did, um, well, Maybe I didn't hear that part, but tell me what they did for a living. Well, mom was a domestic and a, a housekeeper. And she took her skills of love and understanding at the home of these, of the, uh, uh, where she worked. And she taught them, the children, about about God, about responsibility. And she brought it home to us too. Responsibility, completing the job, and never giving up, and you can always make it. That was mom. I mean, you never heard her being discouraging to you at all. She was always, you can do it, you can do it, you can do it, you know? And she turned out uh, some wonderful, I, I would say, children. Do you know some of the family she worked for? Oh, sure. Um, Lawyer Burkett. Uh, she, uh, it was funny. Uh, she worked for Lawyer Burkett. He had a son named Stevie. And Stephen was the same age as my older brother, Julius. And uh, Julius was cut that grass during the summer. And uh, Julius High School, he went to Highlands and they played Alamo Heights. But Stevie went and Stevie played football. And uh, Julius, uh, I guess he did real well. And so after the game, Steve and Julius were talking. So the Alamo Heights coach asked uh, Stephen Burkett, how do you know him? He said, well, he, his mom works for my dad, and Julius cut the grass. He said, the next year, you need to cut the grass so you can be like him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes. How about your father? What did he do? My father, he worked for the, the railroad, and he was a pastor of Bethany Baptist Church here in San Antonio. Uh, as Ed said, we grew up worshiping God, loving God because of our parents. Uh, my father went to Preview no. University. Uh, our whole family went to Preview. My sister Joyce, uh, Glosson Dawn went to Preview. Uh, my sister Mary Harris, she went to Preview. Uh, Joyce's daughters, uh, what is it, Rochelle? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rochelle and Renee. Dawn. Rochelle and Renee Dawn, they, they went to Preview. Ed's son is graduating from Preview this coming May. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> yes. And I took a course at Preview too, not to. Now, I guess I didn't want to be left out. But uh, Prairie View, uh, it's, uh, put it this way. My dad had the best experience, he said, at Prairie View. And he told us, he said, kids, y'all need to go to college because you're going to find your mate in college, you know. And so uh, he pushed education. I mean, there was no doubt. You're either going to go to 
college, he said, are you going in the military? And that's what that, that was dad's words. That's right. And my father wasn't a five foot four. Little bitty man, weighed 120 pounds. But we didn't talk back to dad. And he respected who he was. You know, but education was it. Education's the key, he said, to success. And you're going to get it. You know. And what is the history of Perry? Perry? Perry. Prairie 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 Prairie. Prairie. Historically, Black College started with 1876 or somewhere thereabouts. And this Prairie View fell under, I guess, the governorship of Texas A&M. It's about 45 miles from Texas A&M. And, &M. and uh, it's an agriculture school. But, man, it, was, it turned out, and also it, it, uh, uh, military and yeah. engineering. But it was also a plantation first. Okay. It was a plantation first. What do you know about that? Was it named the same thing? I don't you? know. I, I don't know. Okay. But I got that information from Ed's son. Oh, okay. Uh, he, he told me, he said, that Prairie View was a plantation first. Mm -hmm. And then they turned it into a college. Yes. See, because I went to the University of Texas in El Paso and Trinity University. And Ed went to the University of Missouri. Yeah. And my older brother Julius went to the University of Colorado. We did not go to Prairie View because right. we had scholarships, yes. because we were athletes. Mm -hmm. Where did you get your height from in, in your family? Uh, our mother. Mother, mother's yeah. side. Mother's side, yeah. yeah. How far back can you go with your heritage? Well, mm -hmm. we can take our heritage back uh, to 1816. Mm -hmm. Uh, with the my, my mother's side, by a man by the name of Ezekiel Edward Nance, who started uh, uh, Kyle, Kyle Texas. Texas. And then our father goes back to uh, Peter Glosson, who came here during the uh, Texas Revolution, and he worked on the uh, Skull Farm. Well, it was really called the Elam Plantation, because there was two girls. Elam had two girls, and they married into the Skull family. Now, Peter Glosson worked on that plantation, and the name Glosson came from the overseer on that plantation. And I think Glossons are from a lot of Glossons in your home state of Carolina. Yeah, yeah. Orange yeah. County. Yeah. We traced it back to Orange County. Tell me more about what you know of this. Uh, who? What was the full name of the overseer and what it... Well, what I don't it, know his full name. Okay. But, we do but know he, his name was Glosson. I know that. And we do know that Ezekiel Nance came to from Arkansas? Tennessee. Tennessee to Arkansas and to Texas. Okay? He was Anglo. He had so many children and one of his sons, I guess in the 1850s or 60s, the 1800s, he, he was born, and my mom's dad is a son uh, of his, and uh, there was two sets of families, a black set and a white set. And uh, we go that far back, we traced, and then we went to a funeral, and I remember I was a small child, we went to a black funeral of and now when we walked out of the church, this side had all the black dances, and this side, all the white dances. And we would go down, my uncle would take us down, he said, that's your cousin, that's your cousin, that's your cousin, that's your cousin, all the white ones. And they knew each other. But we had you know, two you know what, was, what is amazing about it is that they all were named after one another. Okay. The, uh, my uncle Tom Nance, hmm? he was a mulatto. And then Tom Nance was a Caucasian, <laughs> and they were related. We said they're talking, and uh, every once in a while I go, I go to the farm, and we sit down and we talk, and, and uh, talk about old times, how we used to come up to Carl and visit and whatever. How we were little kids playing, having a good time. Uh, but my father's side, the Glossons. They were in the uh, part of this Texas Revolution. When I talked to Elam Skull, he told me that 
Travis and Skull came from Alabama. Mm -hmm. See, my, and our family came there with the, with Skull. Mm -hmm. So, and, and you know that Travis died at the Alamo. Mm -hmm. Yes. How is the name Skull spelled? S K U L L, I believe. Yeah, S K U L L. Yes. Right. Matter of fact, the Skulls have a book out. Yes, they have a book. We'll get more into that. Do we need to change that chair? Are you ready? We are live. Okay. okay. Uh, we're going to pick up where we were at. Uh, we just changed out a couple of chairs. Um, but I wanted to go back to those early days. We were talking about the skulls. Um, yes. And what you can tell me about that. Also, who was it that was in Orange County, North Carolina? Oh. In Orange County, North Carolina, Elam Skull was telling me the story. He had two glossers, uh, two men. One stayed in Carolina and one came to Texas. So the one that came to Texas, uh, we took his name. Uh, one of my ancestors by the name of Peter Glosson married Emma Richardson. Now, Emma Richardson's mother was Elsie Boone. And so we traced that back to Elsie. So we started Elsie Boone to Emma Richardson, then from Emma Richardson, married Peter Glosson, to my, to my grandfather, James Glosson, mm -hmm. then from, from James Glosson to my father, Julius Calvin Glosson. Mm -hmm. And what did your family, uh, what did those ancestors do? They were slaves, uh, what crops were they, raised? They worked on the plantation. Okay. Do you uh, know what was raised on the plantation? Uh, not in Lavernia, I don't know. But in Carl, it was cotton. Yeah, yeah. yeah the cotton and, and, and they hit, uh, all kind of meals. Uh, yeah, they, I, they had some meals, I remember that. Yeah. So where did they come first? Where was the first homestead in uh, Texas? The first homestead in Texas was uh, in Laverne. Yeah. Can you pinpoint the location a little bit? Well, it was on the Elam Plantation. Okay. Yeah, that's where they were first time. Now, in Kyle, we can pinpoint it. Matter of fact, in Kyle, the house is still there. The old, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, I'm trying to think of the name. Uh, uh, is that a... Not a log cabin. Yeah, log cabin. Yeah, it was a log cabin. Log cabin's still there. Yeah. Thank you, Ed. <laughs> yeah, that old log cabin's still there. Where is it? Is it is in Kyle, Texas. Is uh, matter of fact, is, is it might be 50 or 60 yards from the uh, the Nance Farm. Is that See, the one we saw? Right. See, okay. uh, what we have, we had, my mother was a Nance, mm -hmm. but also a Kennedy. So you had the Nance and Kennedy Farm was 150 acres, and then you had the, the Nance Farm. And one of the Nance, Tom Nance, mm -hmm. he married Elizabeth Kennedy. Mm -hmm. And from Elizabeth Kennedy came uh, uh, Carrie Glosson. And, well, as a matter of fact, man, Ed, we're going to visit uh, probably uh, next week sometime. Yeah. Talk to some of our people. Right. Yeah. Was the uh, log cabin the slave cabin or was it the white? No, it, it, it was a slave cabin. Yeah. You know, uh, Do you have pictures of that cabin in your scrapbook? Not in my scrapbook, but, I, but we do have pictures. We do have pictures. Now, in my scrapbook, that's dealing with the, the sports. Yeah. I yeah. do need to get to that, but right. okay. this is so interesting. Right. We did see, we went to Kyle, my brother and I, and they, it's fenced off, but they had that, uh, uh, the Nan's house, right? What we saw with the dog run, and it was uh, a yeah. house like on the a house like so, 
and then there was a, a in the middle, it was a, 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 a open area, then another house on this side. And I said, that's kind of unusual. Said, they call it a dog run. I said, what's that about? He said, well, the dog stayed there, so whenever the Indians would come, he could alert them, you know, so and that was a dog run. So it, it was interesting. The house is, uh, it was a log cabin. It was still there, and it furnished that the furnishing of the day, still right there. Well, that's so special to still have the home site. Yeah. The home site's still there. Yeah. Still there. Mm -hmm. Do you have any stories of those days, of the family being there, of what took place at that site? Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, Tell me about know. it. What about Uncle, Uncle Dudley? We, 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 we used to snake. go down to, uh, to Kyle. Yeah. My mother would take us down to Kyle because she had a sister there who lived there named Ciola. Yeah. And so we'd, we'd go visit all the time. And, and and we would just we would play and have a good time, and then uh, rode the horse. Yeah, and, and we would ride the horse here with no saddle, <laughs> and then uh, uh, Aunt Ciola would come up here and visit. Uh, uh, my sister uh, Joyce and, and, and my cousin Carrie Lee was talking one time, and he was talking about the old days, and sometimes. Uh, Ciola and her children, they would have to come up here mm -hmm. on a bus. Mm -hmm. And so when they were coming on the bus, or during that period of time, you know, uh, African Americans had to go to the back. Mm -hmm. And so uh, Aunt Ciola and her children would get on the bus and they would come up. When they would get on the bus, uh, the bus driver would tell the children, now you go to the back. And Aunt Ciola said, wait a minute, those are my children. And he said, no, well, they are black and you're white, <laughs> so you sit in the front and they're sitting in the back. And that's a true story. Uh, yeah. That's that a like true story. Like yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And uh, Clive was telling me once about with the Dudley and the snake. Yeah, and the snake, right. yeah. You can tell him about that. Yeah, well, <clears throat> my Uncle Tom would, would visit. Now, this is still this old log cabin. Uh, when our cousin Dudley Gibson was living in it. And uh, so my Uncle Tom went to, to see Dudley. And they were in there sleeping, and my Uncle Tom looked around and he saw a snake. He said, Dudley, there's a snake. And Dudley said, oh, Tom, don't worry about it. He cut me all the time. He'll go out in a few minutes. <laughs> oh. We had some good times back then. You know, we really did, yes. Did that also uh, form part of why you were athletic, uh, riding the horses, doing things on the Oh, farm? yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. And, and, but uh, the, the Glossard and Nance family, all of them were good athletes. Uh, and it just went from one generation to the next generation. Did you run a lot out there? Did oh, you? yeah, yeah. 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 Well, you know, you just... Let's have a good time as little kids. Yeah. And baseball. Baseball. Uh, we played baseball. Uh, all kind of sports. Yeah, all, all, all the sports. Yeah. Little league baseball. Yeah. We ran track during the summer. Oh, uh, wait. We ran track during the summer. But that's an experience I didn't experience, but Clyde did. He was 14. He was going to the uh, to, uh, Junior Olympics. Junior Olympics. T -t Tell her. Yeah, uh, I was 14 years old, and we qualified for the the championship in Midland, Texas. And the guys that uh, went to Midland, Texas with me was uh, Nathan Hartfield, Carl Hartfield. I can remember this. I will never forget it. Forget it. Edwin Ross and myself, and we had a a driver by the name of Washington. He was an older guy. I guess Washington might have been about 27 years old, and he drove us down to uh, to participate. Well, we had to stay at the Y. During that period of time, you couldn't stay in a hotel, so we stayed at the Y. And then we decided we wanted to get something to eat. So we went to a 
hamburger place and we parked and we ordered hamburgers. By that time, some men started surrounding the car with bats and sticks. Uh, and we're looking for and saying, what's going on here? Well, they said, well, you cannot eat here. Now, here I am, 14 years old. I'm thinking, wait a minute, you mean to tell me these grown men want to beat us with bats and sticks? But a lady came out with our hamburgers, and she said, wait a minute. They came here to get hamburgers. Leave these young men alone. So she stopped them from uh, trying to attack us. Was she white? Yes, she was. Hmm? She was. Do you know her name, Honey No, I don't. I, you know, I, that, that was, <laughs> I'm 70 years old now. That, was, that happened at 14. But that, that's an experience that I would never forget. Yeah. Um, do you have other stories of things that happened like that? Uh, oh, like yes. <laughs> you know, we're talking about the 60s now, all right? I was, I was playing football at Trinity University, and we went to play a team in Louisiana. Mm -hmm. I think it's Southwestern. Mm -hmm. uh, college in Louisiana. I'm trying to remember the name of the college. Mm -hmm. And no no, 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 no. The college. Yeah. 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 Now this was now this yeah. was a. A football game, and I guess there's only maybe four or five blacks on Trinity's football team. And it was Marvin Upshaw, John Smith, and myself, Clyde Lawson. Was it Lyman? Lyman Davis, mm -hmm. Melvin Miles. Mm -hmm. Well, not Melvin, Clarence Miles. Clarence Miles. Melvin Miles <laughs> ran track with us in high school. Mm -hmm. My old brothers, but I was warming up catching punts before the game started, and they were called me all kinds of names in Louisiana. That's the first time that I experienced uh, someone called me a name mm -hmm. like that. So, you know, remember this is the 60s, and this had to be 65, somewhere six, from 65 to 66 in that area. Yeah. But, uh, you know, you, you learn over a period of time, you know, how to, how to love people. And my father had always taught us to love. He said, love is the most powerful force in the world. So when you love somebody, then you have the power of God within you. And so that, that didn't upset us because we were being called names. We just played the game. After the game was over, we came back to San Antonio. But that's another experience <clears throat> I had during that period of time. Yeah. See, our district, Brittany, really, was uh, uh, in high school. They bus us to Houston from San Antonio every other week to play a football game. One week we would go to play Jack Ace in Houston. The next week, a black school from Houston, like we live Houston, would play us here. The next week we'd go there. Mm -hmm. And uh, we ended up... I guess learning how to adjust, we thought that was a normal way of life. Yeah. We saw nobody Anglo until we went to college, you know, because we played everything we saw black. We played, and we were pretty good, you know. And so we were, uh, uh, we would go to. Clyde had more experience than me, uh, playing with at Texas Southern, seeing some of the great athletes that came out of TSU. And uh, that's an experience. Yeah. With, with uh, Homer Jones. Right. You know, uh, the PVIL, this is what Ed is talking about. You had the UIL, where, you, where most African Americans here in San Antonio integrated. But we stayed in the PVIL, which was predominantly black. What we played, we played black the colleges. Fairview in a scholastic league. Right. Yeah. And so when I was a ninth grader, we went to uh, the Texas Southern Relays. And this is what Ed is talking about. Mm -hmm. And uh, during that period of time, you still couldn't stay in a hotel. We stayed in the gym at Texas Southern University. And that's when I got a chance to see all these great sprinters and professional players like Homer Jones who played with the Giants who ran track at Texas Southern. 
with the great sprinter. Uh, Stone Johnson? Stone Johnson. From Gramlin. From Gramlin. Yeah. All these great guys, they, they would stand right in the same area I was staying in. See? And they would pass by and talk. And, and me being, what, a ninth grader? Yeah. You know, I'm yeah. impressed. Yeah. So uh, I had the experience of seeing all these great athletes. And plus my brother was an outstanding athlete himself, Julius Glosson. My oldest brother. My yeah. oldest brother. Yeah. And so yeah. we, we wanted to, to be like Julius. We wanted to uh, be in the newspaper. We, we wanted to, to be successful. We wanted to go to college. At this point, I want to turn it over to Edwin right. to take us from the beginning of the athletic career yes. on through, if you don't mind sure. asking these questions just... since you know it. Okay. And uh, also, maybe you can fill in Philly. your own career. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, tell us about the first gloss, which would be with Uncle Titus. Okay, yeah, okay. The first gloss uh, was Titus Glossin. And they, and they called him Rock. They gave him the name Rock. So uh, from Titus, then came Earl, then came Romus, and Calvin, and William. They all was named Rock <laughs> because they were tough football players. And then Julius, and Clyde, and then Ed. So. We, we came from a, a family of, of great athletes. So it wasn't no surprise to anybody that we were good. Well, but tell me this. Tell us about the first All-American. Okay, the first All-American in the family was William Glosson. He was a two-year All-American at Texas Southern University. And he coached at Texas Southern also. And also Mississippi Valley. In Mississippi Valley, right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, William... Uh, I think he set a record for catching the most passes in one game. Right, right. You know, during this period of time, you had they called it the Cotton Bowl, mm -hmm. but it was Texas Southern against I think Prairie, Prairie View. View, and William caught twenty passes in one game. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, this was unusual because during that period of time they ran the ball more than they were throwing the football. So this was an exception for that period of time. Now, now tell me about our family, the old uh, Julius. Okay, Julius, uh, Julius was the first star in the UIL from San Antonio. Uh, matter of fact, Julius was one of the first who integrated high school here in San Antonio. I think it was Julius and Whitmore and some other guys. Mm -hmm. They integrated, they went to Brackenridge High School. And Julius ended up uh, being a great sprinter and an outstanding football player, and he had a scholarship going to the University of Colorado. What does UIL stand for? University in the Scholastic League. See, so that's, that's what, that was the white one. PVIL yeah. was for the black one. Right. See, and we, the PVIL now, has a Hall of Fame. Right. right? And you have all the athletes from the 40s, or, you know, on up. Uh, being honored, and uh, each year they select him to this Hall of Fame. One year's in Houston, next year's in San Antonio. And so that's what we're doing now, trying to uh, remember the past and honor the, the people that came before us, who, who did so much for us, you know. So, so that's, that's what we're doing. C Clyde came along 1965, and we had a chance, well, his 10th grade year, Queedley, from the all-black school, had a chance to run in a track meet against the white schools. That's the first time it happened. And uh, Queedley did pretty good. So the next year, his junior year, Queedley tied the national record for the 440 relay. And uh, Clyde did pretty good also, individually. His senior year, my 10th grade year, his senior year, we, was, we were asked to go to the University of Texas to run at the Texas Relays. But something happened, and I had to let Clyde explain a little bit to you. 
about us not going to that Texas Okay, University. well, the University of Texas wanted to give me a scholarship. It's in the scrapbook. You can see that. They wrote the letter, and they wanted me to come and run at the Texas Relays, but they wanted uh, Phyllis Wheatley High School to run. But our principal, Dr. S.T. Scott, decided not to let us go to the Texas Relays because the Alma Heights Relays was the first relay that let us run in. So he said, well, now we're going to stay uh, and go to the Alma Heights. Well, the, the athletes, we didn't know that mm -hmm. until we read it in the paper yeah. <laughs> that we couldn't go to the Texas Relays. Right. And I think that if he would have uh, let us go to the Texas Relays, then the other guys would have got scholarships because yeah. we, had, we had great athletes. Yeah. And some of those, those guys didn't get scholarships to uh, Nebraska or uh, USC or uh, University of Missouri mm -hmm. uh, because they didn't get a chance uh, to run in front of a group of people who could see them. So those things we experienced. Right. And, yeah. and 1966, I was a senior in high school, and we integrated. They did, Wheatley was no longer in the PVIL. We became part of the UIL. Okay. And we played in the first integrated game in Texas. Well, Wheatley of San Antonio played Kerrville Tidy and had 14,000 people. <laughs> that game. We won eight to seven. But those things we got a chance to experience. And uh, from that, I got scholarships. I, I, because of my older brothers, they just knew I was going to be good, I guess. And so I got these other scholarships too. Uh, we had scholarships from all across the country. And we, so we were blessed. God had really blessed us. And uh, I just thank uh, my older brothers for paving the way for me. And hopefully, I paved the way for others. Was there something more about the athletic side that we needed to cover? Or? Well, Jewish became the first black coach in the Southwest Conference. Yes. He went to, as a, Jewish came to uh, University of Missouri with me uh, one year. And I don't know how he ended up at SMU, but he went to SMU, became the first black coach in the Southwest Conference under Hayden Fry. Hayden Fry went, is in the Hall of Fame. Uh, for college coaches, and I was coached by Dan Devine, who's also in the College Hall of Fame. Matter of fact, the picture of Hayden Fry and myself is in the scrapbook. And now, Ed mentioned the national high school record for the sprint relay. That's 440 yards. But I also in high school set the national record for 200. And 20 yards. 220 yards. I ran 20.6. I ran 20.4 one time, and they said no. Uh, we're not going to accept that. So the next time I ran, I ran 20.6. And then when I was in college, mm -hmm. I set the national record for the college division. I ran 20.1, but it was 200 meters. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's 218 in yards, yeah. if you're going to break it out in the yards. Okay. So, and then in, in the Junior Olympics, I had the Junior Olympics 100 meters for, the, for age 15 years old. I ran, 9.6. Uh, so God had blessed me with this gift to run. Mm -hmm. And I loved running, and Ed loved it, and my brother Jesus also. So we took advantage of what God blessed us with. Was the Olympics never in the picture? Tonight? I was there in 1968. Yeah. So in 1967, I pulled my hamstring muscle twice. So I couldn't participate in 67. So I came back in 1968. I, I qualified to be on the sprint relay team for the United States team for the 100 meters. Uh, now, my best race was the 200 meters, but we made a mistake in uh, California where I didn't run the 200 meters the second time. So they wouldn't accept me in the 200 meters in the final uh, Olympic trials in Lake Tahoe. But they let me run the 200 meters uh, during the summer. We would travel from city to city, like to Houston, uh, uh, 
uh, we would run in Houston and we would run in other places. And those guys uh, who made the team, uh, like John Carlos, mm -hmm. John Carlos uh, did not uh, defeat me in the 200 meters. Mm -hmm. During the summer, uh, we ran. Mm -hmm. uh, Jim Hines and myself, you know, we were out there running one and two. So we went to uh, uh, Tahoe, and the week before, the, the Olympic trials, I ran 20.1. And that was the fastest time in the world at that time. But they still would not let me run the 200 meters. And uh, again, he felt um, prejudice once more time. He was supposed to go to the 6th Olympics in Mexico City. They take five people. They said, we're going to take four. And you finished fifth on the meter, so you're not a, we're not going to take you to of the Olympics there in Mexico City. See, the thing is, they could have taken me as an alternate because I had qualified. But at the same time, I was transferring to school. I was leaving Trinity University, going to the University of Texas El Paso. Plus, I was going to be drafted in the NFL. So... To me, uh, there was no money in track and field. I was not going to, to cause any problems. Uh, they, were, they wanted to boycott the Olympics and whatever. Uh, if you go back and you read the story of uh, what took place at the Olympics. The Black Fist. Yeah. So I was blessed to go to University of Texas El Paso. A coach by the name of Wayne Vanderbilt he said, Clyde, uh, I tried to get you to come to El Paso a long time ago. Why don't you come on up here now? And I told myself, sure, Wayne, I'm coming. So I, I, I left Trinity and went to uh, UTEP. And at UTEP, we had a spread relay. We had the fastest time in the world in the spread relay. And, I, and I'd anchored that relay team. And then from there, I was drafted by the Kansas City Chiefs. Then from the Kansas City Chiefs, I went to the Buffalo Bills and played from 1970 to 1972. Then I, uh, I had a little time with the Houston Oilers in 73. And then the World Football League came around in 1974 and I went and played in the World Football League. And then uh, the World Football League could not pay us anymore, but they, they, be, they came, became bankrupt. So he decided to teach. I decided to teach school. So I came back home and started <clears throat> teaching school. Teaching athletics, teaching. What did no, you I, teach? I, I, what did you <clears throat> teach? Uh, history, history. Uh, I was a history teacher, and I because my degree was in education. Yeah, uh, history, health, physical education. I could I could teach those subjects. Yes, I was a journalist by trade. I, I ended up going to University of Missouri, and uh, during the summer before I went off to college. I worked at a place, and, and I asked the guy, what does his father do? He said, my father's in PR. I said, tell me about it. He said, all you do is smile and talk a lot. I said, okay, that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> so <clears throat> I went to the University of Missouri. They said, uh, which one I major in? I said, PR. Okay. I didn't know Missouri had one of the best journalism schools in the country. Now, I just had to choose it. And so uh, after uh, I started there in my junior year, I'm in journalism school, and they said, uh, I started doing radio and television. I said, well, I'm not too hot on this. So I'm thinking I, I want to do a little something else. <clears throat> but it was too late for me. So I ended up with my degree in radio and television. And uh, my first job was at a newspaper. I didn't like working on a newspaper. I really preferred TV. And uh, lo and behold, for seven years I worked at the light. Then for 25 I was a publisher of my own newspaper, so my career has been in print, you know. <clears throat> but it was fun. You, you enjoyed it. You meet a lot of people, and and uh, and you know, I was able to help a lot of people because I would go to courts and speak on behalf of people that's facing a jury or a judge and ask for leniency for them or plead their case even. And that's what Clyde would do, I would do, and my dad did. We were trying to help people as best we could. Uh, so I, I, we did a lot of stories on injustices. There was a lady. She had six children. And uh, she had an extra job. But she had two jobs. 
and somehow something happened with food stamps or something. So they put a uh, they want to put an anchor monitor on her for so many days. She said, Judge, please. I work part time at a restaurant and I can't have this anchor monitor because I would lose my job. She didn't care. She put the anchor monitor on the, the woman anyway. She, of course she lost her job with the six children. So I wrote a story about it. Lo and behold, a week or two later, guess who called me? The judge. We need to talk. <laughs> and so we had lunch to discuss the issues uh, that faced the black community and this lady. And we would do things like that in that newspaper. We tried to help people and fight for the, the rights of others, you know. A lady called once. <clears throat> she said, uh, my son's in prison near uh, in Beaumont area. Such a long way from me, and I can't get to see my child. He's having trouble there with the warden. So I said, ma'am, I don't know what I could do, but I'll try. So I called the prison there, asked for the warden who did not come to the phone, but I told him who I was and what I wanted. And I forgot about it. About a month or so later, the woman called me. She said, I don't know what you did, but they transferred my son to somewhere closer. I said, glory be to God, because I never talked to a soul. I just left the message. But that was the beauty of God at work. So that's what I did. What's the name of your newspaper? The newspaper I owned was the San Antonio Register. They're giving us all sorts of time wrapping um, yes, signals here. Yes, and I would love to go on for much, much longer with both of you. Yes. So maybe we can make notes of where we left off and take this up another time. Because yes. I think there's more. Oh, that, would be, that would be just great. And yes. I want to get to the scrapbook and your stories from there. So if we can continue another time. Okay. Yes. okay. We would love to. I'll come wherever. One of the things that we didn't, uh, I don't think we mentioned the, the name of the school that, that you taught at. Okay. Yes. School. Uh, school that I taught at? Yes, sir. Uh, Fox Tech High School. Uh, and then I taught at Jeff Davis Middle School. And that was teaching history. And history, yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes. Oh, oh important. Yes. Okay. Well, Thank we have, you. We have further to go, but this was a start. Yes. Okay. Thank yes. you very much. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Is this okay? So I, I'm used. To, I thought you were going to do this. Oh, <laughs> no, no, we're, we're not I, I'm not used to. Uh,